<laughs> Hello, everybody. How are you all today? Amazing. Well, my name is Sammy. You might also know me as my digital alter ego avatar character called Vinci. Um, and we have Vinci here on the screens on the PowerPoint, if we can get it up here. That is my, my avatar. Um, she is a fictional, super sentient, AI, super heroine warrior from the intergalactic future. And today, I'm here to speak to you all about this topic of metaverse metamorphosis. All right, what a topic. I mean, when we first think about the word metaverse, we go, what is the future of the internet where our physical lives converge with our digital lives? Now, this word metaverse has gone through a complete media hype cycle, but the way I got into it was the future of humanity. It was the potential of where we could go as a human species. And that's why I'm interested in talking about this concept of metamorphosis, because to me, it relates to inner transformation leading to outer transformation. And so, if we're going to extend this metaphor further, metamorphosis, I like to liken it to emerging from the chrysalis. We could say, arguably, that the metaverse is truly the vision of interoperability between standards, experiences, platforms, and services. And so, we're not there yet. The metaverse does not exist. So, arguably, we are in the chrysalis. We are the caterpillar waiting to emerge into the beautiful butterfly. But beyond that, I'm a storyteller, I'm a music artist and a music producer. And the reason I got into this project from the very beginning was I was concerned about AI and whether it will make humans redundant. I read this book, The Singularity is Near by Ray Kurzweil, <laughs> and I was thinking the technological singularity, where does this leave us as creatives if generative AI art and music can do exactly what I can do? And then I was, I just love franchises. I love superhero characters. And I was scanning the landscape going, are there any really badass characters out there that are superheroes that are like fictional AI beings from the intergalactic future? And I couldn't find that many. So I decided to make that my stage name, my alter ego called Vinci, inspired by Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci, as we all know, he's a polymath. And that is my approach to music and to art, to embrace technology, to embrace all the forms of multimedia, to offer a different angle, a different perspective, and to create a story that ultimately leads to transformation. And that is where, where I liken it to emerging from the chrysalis. Because if we can go within our own inner transformation, and that's the, exactly the journey that the Vinci avatar character explores, we can then have an outer transformation as a human species. So it's a proposition. And I like to call this the butterfly effect. As we all know, art has that potential. It has that capability. If you have a strong message, it can transform and carry that message along the breeze and the wind, and whether it's intentional or even non-intentional. And so as I was saying earlier about the singularity, I was alluding to the technological singularity. But this journey evolved further to realize that we are our own singularity. We are our own, there is only now. We are causal agents for the future. And this concept of infinite potential is within all of us. And this led to this whole transformation of what is an avatar character and how can I create an identity in these, in these game platforms and in these digital landscapes. But something we all are very cognizant of and very aware of is this idea that we lose our sense of reality. We lose our sense of locality with our physical environment. We all know that um, you know, when we play Xbox or PlayStation, we put down the controller. We have this disoriented stupor when we look around us and try and reintegrate with reality. And that is the danger of the metaverse, some people believe. But truly, it is the convergence of both our physical and digital lives. So there is this allegory of the cave analogy by Plato, this old story about prisoners in a cave and they see shadows on the wall and that is their reality, but it's a limited, narrow perception. I find it interesting to then uh, relate this to the metaverse when we think about being digital puppeteers. We're virtual creators, we're creating digital assets, digital environments, and we are creating our own shadows of illusions. So having this awareness creates a responsibility, right? A responsibility to not get lost in the digital world, but anything that we create is intentional and with a message, and a message to uplift the consciousness of humanity. And that's my why with the Vinci Project. So introducing Vinci, as I was saying, a super sentient AI superheroine being from the intergalactic future. 
And it led to this question of, okay, so she's a fictional AI character, but am I going to implement actual AI technology into this creativity? And so it led to this ex exploration of generative AI music. And I went through that journey, but what I learned is nothing can replace human creativity after dabbling in all these technologies. And then I extended this concept further to the story. I wrote a science fiction novel. It's coming out next year, based 500 years in the future. And uh, without giving full spoiler alerts away, I, lead, I, I, cr I create this question of whether is she artificial or is she an authentic intelligence? And what do I mean by an authentic intelligence? Perhaps, just perhaps, this being from the future is interconnected to the greater whole of oneness. Perhaps she is a fractal of a larger experience. But I'll leave that all for you to interpret. Okay, so avatars. What is an avatar? What is the nature of being? I found it really fascinating that the word avatar derived from the ancient Sanskrit word avatara, which means descent. So technically, all of us here in the audience could be avatars because our consciousness is in our human bodies. So if we have that awareness, what power can we have when we translate this to the digital world and when we create whatever we want to create in these digital landscapes? And that's what I love about the metaverse. It's unbridled self-expression, not being limited by the physics of reality. But the power that you can have is that you can share your consciousness, you can share your authenticity, ironically, in the digital landscape and show your true spiritual essence. And that was the mission and the vision of the Vinci Project. Vinci is a warrior spirit, and that's what I personally align with, and that is what guided me in this whole journey of multimedia creativity. So, the heroine's journey. We all know the hero's journey. They have the whole plot. They also go through the shadow work. And so I just wanted to allude to that there, that every superheroine needs her own theme music. And so this shows the evolution of Vinci into a multidimensional being. It was very ironic, the first ever music, uh, music video I released was called Citizen AI. It was inspired by Sophia the robot actually being granted citizenship as an AI entity. And the music was quite industrial. In fact, it was a mid-tempo bass track. But as I've, as I've evolved as an artist over time, in parallel with the journey of Vinci, my music has become more emotional and authentic over time to reflect the growth of the character into enlightenment, as you can see on the diagram there. And so I'm going to play for you a video. Um, and I'm going to talk about my process after, because you might find it interesting. Uh, and it illustrates the point about the democratization of technology and how accessible and available it is for independent creators. So I'll play this song. It's called I Came, I Saw, I Conquered. I produced it, and it was made in Unreal Game Engine. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. So that was all made in the bedroom. <laughs> and that's the power. That's the power of being an independent creative. We all have this ability and we all can tell stories with these tools, that, these technologies. I'm sure you have, have we all played Fortnite here? 
oh, maybe it's the younger generations, but, but basically Epic Games owns Unreal Engine, so the, the, the program's free to learn. Even if you're not a game engine programmer, what I, what I love about it is that in the cinematic sequencer, you can tell stories. And then you can build virtual environment experiences and publish them to the web, and I call it YouTube University. So that is the power of storytelling when you converge the gaming industry with the music industry. I'm going to play another video now, just very shortly, to show and illustrate another dimension to the character. And as you can see, the strategy is the more music you create, the more videos and environments you create, the more layers of storytelling you build around this, this uh, digital avatar 3D file. emotional song here. You can see you've got the, the mirrors, they're representing doors, they're closing on her. But eventually one door opens and that is symbolic of opportunities in life. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to pivot here <clears throat> and get some water. My goodness, my throat. But um, I explored motion capture to animate my avatar character. And um, basically, it's an iPhone capturing my face data, 52 blend shapes with the AR kit. And I, I created a podcast show called Future Humans, and I wore a mo motion capture suit, being a Rococo suit. How do you see the world? Do you see it as a sequence of events that you passively react to? Or do you see it as a creative endeavor for bending reality based on the positive, pure intention of your mindset? So what's cool about that is all of a sudden you're creating a new dimensionality to the character. Motion capture is accessible. Like now you don't even need fancy hardware suits. There's a company called Move AI. Literally cameras can pick up your data. So it's quite deceiving because obviously I do not look like that, but you're able to tell stories in new dimensions. So the process, this is me in the music studio, as you can see uh, with Unreal Engine there. I have these stage shows, they're multimedia immersive experiences. I have these LED screens behind. And um, my process with my live stage shows is I'm streaming live from Unreal Engine to this program called Disguise Designer, and they have this plugin called a render stream. So basically, you can show your avatar live in the engine live in real time. <clears throat> And so I just want to quickly dabble on this concept of uh, storytelling and what is the future franchise. So Vinci, she's just the Luke Skywalker of a larger space opera universe. And that's what's really exciting about being a creative. You can build worlds and tell stories and create complete universes. <clears throat> and I call this the multiplayer brand because basically you're able to co-create with me in real time and create your own avatar and persona. <clears throat> And with this is real-time gamified experiences and remix culture. <clears throat> I'm so losing my voice. But basically, with world building, you can be your own avatar and in real time co-create with me to the degree of your liking. So I call this the degrees of immersion. Metaphorically, it could be the floaters, the swimmers, and the divers. So the floaters, I liken that to, I will visit this world, but... I'm not actively invested in the franchise. The swimmers are, I've got an identity and I'm actively co-creating in this future society. I don't know, 500 years in the future, I see the Vinci character, but I have my own identity. And the divers are, I'm actively investing. Maybe I'm using web three technologies in the blockchain or somehow I'm financially invested, I'm culturally invested, I've got cultural capital, and maybe I've inspired Vinci and the original IP holding to completely take a new turn and a new pivot with the storyline. And that to me is a complete new way of thinking about franchises and the multiplayer brand. So <clears throat> why create? Why do we create? I, I talked about this earlier, because we can lead to metamorphosis. We can lead to transformation, like the butterfly effect. <clears throat> and art versus art, art with a capital A, is with intention, 
but arguably, arguably, generative AI is art with a lowercase a because it doesn't have consciousness, it doesn't have intention. And then we have to think about our audience. Are our audience humans or are they NPCs? Maybe AI in the future will create content for AI, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> but right now, we're creating for humans because we want to relate to the human experience. And something I'm very personally passionate about is we all know the world is divided, right? There's a lot of fear going around, but the counteractive force to that is love. And that is the why behind why we should create art with a capital A. It can last the test of time. It can transcend thousands of years into the future. And I think about the youth. I think about the future generations. They're, they're dealing with AI as their natural habitats, basically. Um, we'll have AI agents. They'll become subject matter experts. We'll have private personal assistants, PPAs. Our whole paradigm is shifting of what is real, what is not real. Like I said earlier about the cave of illusions. So it's so important to embrace the real, but also if we're going to embrace the not real, the digital landscapes, that we do it with intention and we do it with this cognizance and this realization that we can look after each other, we can empower one another and use art as a force for good, a force for love, not fear. And in fact, talk about creativity, Vinci has a tuning fork, a life-size tuning fork as her instrument, not weapon, instrument of love. And I've used that metaphorically in the novel that I've written that you'll see coming out next year. And so yeah, the youth, the future generations, we're going through a quantum infinity upgrade, I call it. And the best service to humanity uh, is to realize our infinite potential and to be in the service of others. And that is Vinci, as you can see, she's bowing down with angel wings. So thank you for listening. I hope this has inspired you to go and create. Thank you.